welcome back. And if you're new, come on and join us on our little culinary journey here. Today, I'm going to make a turbo noni bread. This is gonna take what normally lasts about 12 to 24 hours to make really good bread down to about two and a half hours. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do, I have a glass bowl in here. I'm going to get that warmed up a little bit because the key to making this so quickly is to have a warm bowl and make sure the yeast, the instant yeast, starts working really quick, okay? Doesn't take long, maybe 15, 20 seconds to go. I had a little bit of water in there. Just gonna dump that out. Gonna add 13 ounces of lukewarm water. This is set at about 113 degrees. Easy way to tell if it's the right temperature. You put your finger in there and if it doesn't burn, then you're good. So that's a key. You need to have some warm water. 13 ounces right in here. I'm gonna take a teaspoon of yeast. I'm using this Safe Instant, really good brand, I recommend. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle that. Don't just plop it in there, sprinkle it to let it kind of absorb in there a little bit. Then to this, I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt, a little bit of sugar, and a little bit of brown sugar. This is gonna help activate that yeast and get it going. Again, sprinkle it nice here. Take a spoon and incorporate that. Make sure it's all dissolved. There we go. This is gonna start doing its magic and allowing to go. From here, next step is to add three cups of flour. A key to making good bread or anything using flour is to aerate your flour before you just throw your scoop in there to start measuring. Sometimes flour can compact and you'll actually, although it looks like a cup, you'll be putting in a cup and a half or a cup and a quarter, which will throw off your recipe. So stir it around before you start scooping. You see that it's nice and fluffy. Now I can go in here and do that. Kind of level it out. Three spoons. I usually kind of throw it onto the side, try not to make a huge mess. There's two. And then three. Here we go. From here, now we gently fold in. I like to use a wooden spoon the other side and just kind of gently fold it in here. We're gonna incorporate this in, scraping the sides as best you can till it forms like a nice little sticky ball. So take a minute or two to go, but you see it's already starting to form. It doesn't take a lot of stirring because you don't want to agitate it too much. So I'm going to go here. And we've got a pretty good job here. I'm going to take a little scraper and scrape the edges off. Just kind of incorporate it all so you get all that flour. Mix it in. If you notice, it's a little dry. You can always add a little more warm water at this point, but this looks pretty good. So from here, you can cover it with saran wrap, or I like to cover it in a tea towel. Just put it over the top. And we're gonna proof this for about an hour in 78 to 85 degree weather here. Here, I'm gonna put mine in the oven. And normally houses are about 72 degrees. So I turned on the oven light. That's gonna bump that up to about 85 degrees with the ambient light there. So we're gonna keep this in. Set the timer for one hour. And we'll meet back here in a little bit. Okay, we're back. It's been one hour. So now we're gonna take this 
out and we're gonna what's called degas it. You'll notice this is almost doubled in size, which is perfect. That means the yeast combination worked. I'm just gonna easily knock this down. See that? That's gonna reduce back down. Took all the gas out of it. In here. There we go. Now we're gonna do this again. One more hour. And we're almost there. Get that timer so we don't forget. One hour. Okay, final stage of the bread here. I'm gonna take it out of the oven. This is the second proofing. It's been in for one hour. Let's take a look at it. Should have doubled. Oh, that's beautiful right there. All right, we're gonna knock that down again. In the meantime, I'm gonna put it to bake. I'm gonna go 375 here. Preheat that bad boy. And you'll notice here, I've got a cast iron skillet. You can put it in a bread pan. I like the rustic look of the cast iron. So I put a little olive oil in there, just enough to coat it and give it something. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take my spatula and now I'm gonna just knock it and let it fall in here. It's laking some of the gas out there again. So stretching, perfect, get it all. We're gonna shape it a little bit in here, not too much. As I said, I like the rustic look. Now from here, just gonna move it around in the pan and I'm gonna put this back on. While this thing heats up to 375, I'm gonna let this rest one final time for about 30 minutes. That's the two and a half hours. Then we're gonna cook it in here. It's gonna take about 40 minutes, 35 to 40 minutes to get perfectly crusty and ready to go. So we'll come back for the final cooking. All right, 40 minutes later, it's time to take the bread out. Let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. That is looking good. It smells so good too. Nothing better than fresh baked bread. Carefully take it out. This pan is scalding hot. Here, that is hot. Take a look at the bottom. Ooh, that's looking so good. So, three hours later, start to finish, from scratch, you have fresh turbo baked bread. And now for dinner, I'm gonna be making chicken piccata. And that's the bread we're gonna eat with that chicken piccata. So I hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any comments or feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Enjoy.